Hello, and uh, welcome to my hot tent. Um, I know that we're going into, uh, or we're in spring, going into summer in a couple of months, but I did want to go uh, give a little overview of my winter tent setup, at least the most common one that I have. I have a couple more tents. I have a different stove uh, that can all accept the wood stove. Um, but honestly, this is the one that I take most often. I have uh, slept in this thing these at least 10 times, um, a few of which have been in relatively or pretty deep snow uh, and pretty low temperatures, um, approaching zero, just as the ambient temperature, not even including the wind. Uh, but I did want to go over um, the stuff that I use or take with me that I have uh, that makes it really comfortable to actually stay in the uh, in the tent in, in such frigid temperatures. So... I mean, some things uh, have been switched out, uh, but the uh, it, only because I got a, you know, a better version of something or what have you. Uh, but generally, I take the same stuff out. There are a couple of items that I didn't bring today uh, because the temperature is in the mid 40s right now. Um, got down to low 40s, high 30s. So enough uh, to merit having the stove uh, and not be uncomfortable with the heat. Um, I certainly didn't need it. My sleeping bag is definitely warm enough, but uh, I have it. So why not use it? Um, so first up is the stove. Uh, hopefully you can see it, but I'm going to uh, turn this a little bit here. So that is the Lux Wild Wild West titanium knockdown stove. Um, it breaks down into <clears throat> the uh, four sides, uh, the two long sides, the back, the door, and then the top and bottom. Uh, the flue is just a piece of thin sheet metal that's uh, twisted into a cylinder and you bolt it together, and then uh, yeah, stainless steel uh, stovepipe. Uh, the door is also made of stainless steel. Um, I really like it. It's perfect for this tent uh, size-wise. It's quite small, so you got to make sure that you have to, or that you cut your wood down to an appropriate length. Uh, otherwise, you'll have pieces like uh, like this one that's too long, and I have to cut in half now, um, <laughs> which is fine. But um, it, uh, it really works well. Uh, it heats up super quick. Um, it, it goes together uh, fairly okay after it's been burned, especially after it's been burned really hot. Um, the panels definitely do warp, so it takes a bit of finagling to get it back together, but it's not terrible. Um, uh, maybe about the time it takes to put together a more complex tent. Um, but the nice thing is, once you have your tent up, you're out of the wind and you're out of the snow slash rain, so uh, it's... Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, the next item is the tent itself. This is the One Tigress Smoky Hut. Uh, this is the first version of it. I know they've upgraded it um, in terms of the door. Uh, I don't know the exact nature of the uh, the updates that they made, but um, this is the older version. But to me, it works perfectly fine. Uh, the door panels are actually right behind uh, the area you know, from your vantage point. Um, and uh, pardon me, this is the back of the tent over here. Uh, opposite the door, but uh, it's, pardon me, uh, pretty sizable. I think it's like 10 feet across uh, at any given point, and um, it came waterproof. I did waterproof it, but, uh, you know, it's all seam sealed. Uh, it didn't come with a stove jack. I had to purchase the fiberglass panel, um, but uh, otherwise, it's a really inexpensive option. It's really small, packs down very small. Uh, the tent pole is definitely the longest part and sticks out like three inches from the rolled up tent. The rolled up tent is only maybe 10 inches, um, maybe 12. Uh, I'd say between 10 and 12. Um, and when it's fully rolled up, uh, even not that tightly, it's only like four inches in diameter. It weighs next to nothing. Uh, it's an excellent option for backpacking uh, for winter and the in conjunction with a knockdown tent. I'm not saying, or a stove. I'm not saying this one specifically. It could be a different one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have the Nyko Packer stove, which doesn't fold down. That one is much bigger than this one. It's almost too big for this tent. So, um, this one, this size, which is like nine by 14, maybe by six and a half, something like that. Um, when it's fully constructed, this one's perfect. Um, for my, uh, cutting system, again, this really hasn't changed. I generally take, uh, a fairly decent variety of knives out with me. Um, I used to have the Holtzbrook Salen axe uh, slash hatchet. It's like right in between. 
Um, I still have it, but uh, it's been replaced by the Grand Source Brook. Uh, what the heck is the name of this? It's a hatchet. I love this thing. Uh, it's the first time I've taken it out and used it. I love it. The, the feel, the weight, the shape of the head. It's great for splitting. It's great for, you know, uh, small chopping uh, operations. Um, again, it is a hatchet, so, you know, it's going to be limited in some capacity uh, and for some functions. But uh, this thing is awesome. I absolutely love this thing. Definitely the best axe or hatchet I've ever used, bar none. Um, I have my uh, Silky Big Boy. Uh, this thing is indispensable for processing firewood. I mean, it's not like I'm building a campfire out in a pit where I can just build it up super big and toss on logs that are wet or you know damp or not split or whatever. With a stove, you need to process your firewood down to, uh, I'd say, no bigger than maybe like these pieces, right? Like down here, it's maybe two and a half inches. Um, but this is about the largest size I would want to use. Uh, otherwise, uh, and not damp or as uh, dry as absolutely possible because by the time wood dries out in the stove with even a decent sized coal bed, uh, the coals may actually die before it fully dries out and combusts the wood you put in. So you got to make it so that it is as burnable as possible, as dry as possible. Obviously, you know, it was pouring yesterday and it's been pouring for several days. So most of the wood I cut up was, uh, was damp on the exterior. But once you start splitting it and you get into the center, um, it definitely is, uh, uh, your, your chances of finding dry wood are, go up exponentially. Um, so having a saw and you don't need a hatchet but or, or an axe, uh, but it definitely makes life easier if even uh, if you're just using it as a wedge. So uh, that was uh, those two are um, I have to have to bring. Um, I got my uh, Bark River JX5. Uh, is it necessary? No. I mean, like, I bring it out because I do use it. It's easier to carry than the hatchet is, at least right now, because the hatchet doesn't have a belt loop. Um, but, uh, uh, I do, I do hike with this when I go out winter camping or just camping in general. So sometimes I'll strap this on to my belt. Otherwise, um, it's there if I need it. Uh, it is heavy. Do I need to take it? No. Am I going to leave it, uh, at, um, on some trips, yeah, absolutely, um, because I got the hatchet. Uh, I also have uh, a belt knife. Um, this is the uh, Brock Companion. Um, pretty much my go-to uh, bushcraft camping out in the woods knife. Um, definitely an excellent, excellent blade. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, go check them out. BrockKnives.com, I believe it is. Uh, he's based in Ireland. Davey uh, Crawford is the proprietor, and that man does a fantastic job with blades. Um, definitely worth checking out. Uh, here's my necker, which I generally use for cooking uh, and just, you know, basic tasks um, inside the tent because big knife, you know, I might whack the center pole or something like that. I try and use a smaller blade. Um, so this is the uh, Battle Horse Knives North River, I believe. Uh, it's the only one I've actually ever seen anyone post on their page or anything. I'm sure other people have them. I've just never seen people post them. Um, it's a cool blade. I really, I really dig it. Uh, it's a cool, uh, cool necker. Uh, and then just, uh, stuff I keep in my pocket. I got the Benchmade Freak, uh, and then I have the Gerber Armbar Drive. Um, this is my everyday pocket knife. Screwdriver, all scissors, knife, pry bar. Don't need much more than that. Um, and sleep system. So I have my, uh, a Tepa, a Tepa, uh, low ripstop nylon, uh, ultralight cot. Um, it is made of aluminum. It is awesome. It's awesome. I have another video on it. You should check it out. If I remember, maybe I'll put it into the, uh, corner or whatever, but excellent, excellent cot. Uh, it was like 70 bucks. I think, um, it does not go higher. I know that one tigress and a few others, including a Tepa have one that you can make taller, like 12 inches tall, but in this tent, you cannot have a tall cot because it's just you have to move it in so far that you'll be too close to the stove and there's a potential for burn if you like kick your sleeping bag off to the side or whatever. Um, so in order to maximize the space in here, 
having a low cot is indispensable. Uh, unless you want to be right on the ground, which is perfectly fine. Um, I don't. So uh, I, uh, I got this cot. I love it. And the nice thing about having a cot also is that if you're on unlevel ground, uh, you can just put rocks or whatever under the uh, contact points, under the feet. Uh, and there's only eight feet on the whole thing, four on each side. Uh, so it's pretty easy to level out. Um, and uh, and you don't need to have your tent level as long as your cot is, uh, which is excellent. It does also have these straps to hold your sleeping pad. I got a Climate Static V um, sleeping pad, and I have a hike and bike 15 degree sleeping bag uh, down, uh, down sleeping bag here. Absolutely love it. Um, quick tip. I have a chair. Uh, it's one of those, you know, standard fold-up ultralight uh, or lightweight uh, hiking camp chairs. Thing's awesome, but in this tent, it is too tall. Um, and uh, you have to sit very close to the fire, which in the middle of winter is not bad. So that's cool if you want to do that. Um, but uh, for days like this or whatever, if you don't want to have to sit right next to the stove. Uh, I did pick this up from, uh, was it, backcountry.com. They had it in my closeout. I think I paid $13. Alps Mountaineering Stadium seat. Uh, again, it's very light. doesn't take up much room at all. It fits right into the back of my backpack. And um, this thing is excellent for, uh, for having a backrest. Otherwise, you're kind of sitting in a twisted configuration or whatever, or you're hitting your head on the, the peak of the tent, um, or you're too close to the fire. So this thing is, uh, is really good. Uh, definitely worth its weight, I think. Um, yeah, uh, backcountry.com. They've been on clearance for a long time on that site. So they might still be now. Uh, again, I paid $13. There was another version. I got both. Um, I got two of these and I got one of the other. Uh, they were pretty much the same price. Uh, and they both function the same way. They both feel the same. I think the other one is actually a little bit more rigid. This one does fold. So I can contour it to stuff in my pack, which is really nice. Um, uh, so I uh, highly recommend checking that out. Um, I got a G4 free table. Uh, I, I didn't start with the table. Um, it's something that I uh, uh, picked up last fall, uh, but it really came in handy the uh, times I, I went out and winter camped. Um, obviously, keeps things off the ground. You also have level underneath, uh, so this thing is really nice, really light. Um, I know there's a ton of ones out there. This is like a nylon one, or a, a yeah, I don't know. It's not a very high denier, but it's... Uh, it's still really, really sturdy um, and uh, definitely highly functional. Uh, decent space, like foot and a half by two feet, I think it is. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, for light, I normally carry a hurricane lantern with me, um, but uh, I just got this in the mail a couple days ago. This is the Olight O-Lantern Mini. Uh, I like it. I like the hurricane lantern better, even though I have to carry fuel and obviously there's a chance of fire and everything uh but this i think is more for like a regular tent uh not really for a tent like this there is a hook up here so i would you know hook it to uh up at the peak um and it's okay but again i think more for a tent not for a uh not for a teepee tent like this um i like my hurricane lantern and plus i like the ambiance of it uh but it is an excellent lantern i do like it it's just i think for here it doesn't work uh, nearly as well um, obviously for my cooking, I normally use the stove. I do have a little, uh, you know, knockoff jet or, um, pocket rocket type stove, but, uh, I, um, uh, I normally use the, uh, the wood stove for, uh, for cooking. So I got a little spice kit here. Um, and then I'll bring, depending on what I'm planning on cooking, I'll bring out, uh, different, um, different cooking implements. I almost always have my pan. This is a Keith Titanium, um, a Keith Titanium pan. Uh, this thing is awesome. Uh, things really don't stick to it, which is fantastic. Uh, I don't know why, but I had this expectation that things were just like going to burn because titanium can it transfer heat so well that it, it gets so hot. I figured stuff would, would burn to it before it even cooked. Uh, but no, this thing does great. I, I am very, very pleased with that. Um, I got a uh, Tokes titanium plate, uh, which I generally carry at the same time. So if I bring the pan, I bring the plate. Um, and you can also cook in this thing as well. I've, I've done that uh, you know, when, uh, when necessary. Um, and uh, I almost always bring 
my 750 mil, I think it's 750 mil cup uh, with lid and bail. This is also Tokes. Um, I'll heat, I'll boil water in this. I'll drink uh, my coffee from it uh, when I forget to bring my cup. Um, but uh, I almost always have this thing as well. It uh, is very useful. The pot I usually bring, this is the one and a half liter pot. I almost always bring this as well just because I, uh, I usually make a meal of, of cooked rice and, and uh, chicken. Um, and this thing is a uh, perfect size for it. And it's got the handles and the bell, so it's, it's excellent. Uh, the thing I usually leave are the stove, the jet, uh, the pocket rocket style stove, because that way I don't have to bring the fuel. I don't have to bring the stove and its case. And that also means I don't have to bring this cup, which is what I usually store the, the stove in. Um, not really saving a ton of weight or space, but whatever. It's just one more thing I have to keep track of when I, when I bring it out. Uh, but today, for some reason, I figure why the hell not. Um, so that's my cook system. Um, and again, I cook directly on the stove top. And this thing does a great job of transferring heat uh, fully around. So yes, of course, next to the stovepipe is going to be the hottest because all the flame is traveling towards there. But even towards the front, it's still hot enough to give pretty equal temperature. So if you're cooking a chicken breast, it'll... I'd put the thin or the smaller end towards the front of the stove, but it's still going to cook, you know, pretty, pretty equally. Um, you just got to spin it around every so often in your pan. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it, uh, it works. It works fantastically. Um, as a, uh, as a cooktop. Very, very happy with that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I bring, I generally bring a fiberglass blanket to put under the tent or under the stove so that I could spread the tarp out as far as I can. So I have a place to walk except for the front. When I first come in, I usually leave that open. Um, it makes it easier to walk on the bare ground, of course, uh, without having to really take off your shoes or whatever. But it also, I guess you could say, levels out the snow. Uh, you know, obviously you tamp it down as best you can, but it's still going to have undulations. And having the tarp down just makes it a little bit easier to uh, ignore those, I guess. Plus, water doesn't seep through, especially if you've waterproofed it. Um, so I generally keep uh, uh, keep that blanket with me. Again, weighs next to nothing. But it is kind of thick. It's about a quarter inch thick. And when you fold it up, uh, it's two by four. Two by four? Two by two? I think it's two by two. Um, so when you fold it up to fit in your pack, it takes up a decent amount of space. And it's fiberglass, so you know, like you don't want particles to come off and get in your food or whatever. So you, you want to transport it relatively carefully. And when you put it down, just uh, uh, you know, hope that the particles that have come out of it uh, have a chance to either settle onto the ground or get blown out before you start cooking, um, or before you really spend a lot of time in here because you're going to be breathing it in. Um, I don't know how terrible it is for you or not, uh, but I'd rather not inhale it if I can help it. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, the last part of my cook kit are, uh, is my, uh, finesse city, uh, utensil set. And, um, I did get the set with the chopsticks. I am half Korean. Uh, so I do use my chopsticks a lot, uh, probably more than any other, uh, I mean, not that you have to be Asian to, uh, to use chopsticks, but man, I find these things to be absolutely indispensable when you're cooking. You can grab pretty much, I cooked a freaking sweet potato in this stove and I was turning it with the chopsticks and everything. Didn't have to, didn't have to worry about it at all. Um, they're great for cooking bacon and everything. So if you can, uh, get yourself a set of chopsticks, titanium, they won't rust, obviously. Uh, they're very light. Um, I wish they were a little bit longer, but they're a decent length. Uh, don't get the super short ones because when you put your hand over the stove or over whatever you're cooking with those short ones, uh, those are really only meant for eating, not for cooking. Uh, so get the longest ones you can get. Um, this no, uh, knife that came with it, it's worthless. The set is great. I love the set. This knife is worthless. Um, so I may just throw it away. I don't know. Um, it doesn't really cut anything at all. I might try and sharpen it, uh, like change the bevel angle. Uh, but otherwise, the fork is great. The chopsticks are great. The spoon is great. Um, yeah, I love this set. Uh, totally recommend it. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. I think like 22 bucks or whatever. 
But that was through Amazon. I'm sure if you got it through AliExpress or whatever, direct from China, because it all comes from China, uh, then uh, it's probably cheaper. Uh, maybe even a different brand. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, and uh, last light, headlight. Oh, and uh, for water. So I have, um, I have my uh, Camelback, which I always bring. Um, I did just get this. Uh, I haven't had the chance to, uh, to use it yet. But this is more for like a camp, like base camp with several people. But this is the uh, Membrane Solutions 6 liter, I believe it's 6 liter. Uh, yeah, 6 liter gravity uh, water filtration system. So you got your water filter here. This is your gravity bag. And you have your hose with a uh, uh, stopper on it, um, clamp, hose clamp. And, uh, you know, so you just, you go down to the, um, uh, the water side, you know, be it creek, stream, pond, puddle, whatever, you know, whatever you can find. And, uh, you know, you, you just fill this sack with water and, uh. And then you uh, hook up the filter to it and hook up the hose. Um, I don't know about other people's recommendations, but I would say if you're going to use this thing um, and you're going to fill that bag, if you can help it, it might be better to try and like filter the water through a cloth first just to get the bigger debris out of it. Uh, it might make the water filter last longer. Of course, I could be totally talking out of my butt, um, but that just makes sense to me intuitively. Um, so, I don't know if I'm going to need this on this trip. I got a lot of water in the Camelback, and uh, uh, plus I have other things to drink, uh, and what I'm cooking today won't require much, so this might be it, but just to be sure, I wanted to bring it with me and, uh, uh, you know, have it just in case, and maybe I'll test it out, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, take from that what you will. A lot of this stuff is wants, not needs. Um, for needs, I would break it down to the tent, obviously, the stove, the cot, the bag, the pad, right? Everything I have for the sleeping system. I would say that this or some sort of chair is a necessity, especially in the winter. If you're stuck in here because it gets dark early um, and you don't want to spend your time outside, storms, raging, whatever, um, in order to be comfortable, I recommend the seat, uh, a seat of some sort. Um, saw and hatchet or axe, knife, some sort of cook kit, pot, pan, you know, either doesn't have to be the whole set that I have out there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention, and I did a video on this from before. I can't remember if I still have it public, but I made these fire starters. Now, the last time I went winter camping was, uh, it was a snowstorm and it was really cold. And I had a hell of a time getting wood started, uh, even with good tinder. So I had brought these fire starters with me, and I made them really big. I shouldn't have made them so large, or at least I, made, I should have made them with, like, grooves to, like, a Toblerone so you could just snap off pieces. But these things worked excellently. Um, it's sawdust, Japanese cotton, uh, cotton squares, which I fluffed up, and paraffin wax. I did put a wick in there. I'm probably going to do more wicks. Like if I make a cylinder or a disc like this, I'll probably make it into like eight smaller pieces that you can just snap off and have eight wicks. But you don't even really need a wick. Um, the cotton in there, once you expose it and you kind of try and fluff it up a little bit with your knife, you hold a flame to that or a spark from a ferro rod. Or, um, you know, you could probably even... No, 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 I don't know if the char cloth would work on it. Although it might. Um... You might be able to use char cloth and a, a strike flint striker or something like that. Um, and uh, this thing was it, it, it got my fire going. It got, I, I know I would have been able to eventually, but you know, I'm like, hey, I have these, I'll give them a try. Man, worked a treat. Uh, I'm definitely going to make more. Um, and uh, yeah, if I if I remember, I'll put that video down in the description as well. So, thank you for coming with me. Uh, excited to uh, head out. Finally, the sun is shining. It poured all last night. Thunder and lightning. Um, and uh, going to go hike the land and see what's, uh, see what's new out here. So thank you. Appreciate it. Hope to see you.